contact. Hey, I'm Chris Hardwick. So, as a lot of you know, Attack of the Show launched in 2005 and sadly comes to a close this year. So, I guess I figured for this episode, uh, why make you listen to me talk for an hour? So, let's just watch Olivia Munn's Munder Years. Run it. What are you? I owe everything to the fans. and Charles, and these are the Munder Years. Olivia sat down with me in her Beverly Hills home to answer the question that's on everyone's hey, lips. Who is Olivia Munn? Olivia, I have to say that this house is beautiful. Truly remarkable. It's home. Well, at least my, my winter home. I have summer in Montauk, oh. and I have spring homes in Tokyo and Nice. Mm. And lately, I've been autumning in Rome. Autumning. Yeah, but this has so much of me here. It's where I go to recharge. Just kick back and be yourself. I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Because you said to recharge. Yeah, recharge my phone. Oh, I said... Okay, well, yeah. So what defines a woman like Olivia Munn? It's a mystery that begins in a very unlikely place, her past. Miles from the urban sprawl of Los Angeles is the pastoral paradise of Oklahoma, where a little girl named Lisa Olivia Munn was born. When her mother remarried an Air Force man, Olivia was relocated to the Shinjuku district of Tokyo under the watchful eye of Japan's vigilant ninja shadow guard, the Black Hand of the Jagged Lotus. During this time, she was an occasional serial and board game box model, until at the age of 10, she was discovered by an American television producer and asked to join the cast of a new children's variety show, The Pen 15 Club. But tell me, what was your role on the show? Well, the premise is that we were all different types and colors of pen. Oh. <laughs> I was red. Okay. And there were 15 of us total. Mm. There was black pen, felt tip, <laughs> sharpie. We were a team. <laughs> we were a family. We actually all got matching tattoos together. Oh, really? Mm. Oh. <laughs> um, well, yes. Yeah. Pen 15. It, it hurt, oh. but it, in a good way. Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. can imagine. Now, I imagine with 15 people, there must have been a lot of infighting or... Uh, Backstage antics, you know, everyone vying for attention. No, oh, none whatsoever, actually. But then tragedy struck as one by one, the members of the cast were picked off by a mysterious killer. The word hack written in the forehead of each victim in red ink. Olivia was the only survivor. Though briefly a suspect, she was acquitted on all charges. As authorities stated, there's no way a 10-year-old could have committed these crimes. I mean, look at her. She's so gosh darn cute. Like a sweet pudding pie baked in heaven. Years after that tragic incident, Olivia entered the Little Miss Pretty competition, where she was named first runner-up. But when the winner, Victoria Beecham, was mysteriously kidnapped and injected with three liters of testosterone and some horse DNA, she was deemed unable to carry out the duties and responsibilities of Little Miss Pretty, and the crown was given to Olivia. <sighs> I felt terrible. You really don't want to win that way. Well, have you spoken to Victoria since? Not really, but she has actually changed her name, and I hear she's doing great. She actually has been in a lot of really big movies recently. You might have actually heard of her. Gerard Butler? Oh, but 300? That, that yeah, 300. I never knew. I never knew. So underneath that loincloth, that Vagina. Well, look All at that. vagina. As it turns out, Gerard Butler wasn't the only Little Miss Pretty whose career was blossoming. 
In 2006 came Olivia's most important role to date, co-host of Attack of the Show. Life-altering? Without question. Wow. I, for one, have really gotten to know you by watching this show. You know, the real Olivia Munn is just not some pretty face. You are funny. Charismatic. Oh, I am so very excited. Controversial. You're not even good enough to be anywhere but the kitchen. Outrageous. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why don't you put down your thesaurus, Sherlock, and pick up a dictionary? Okay, Controversial? Well, outrageous? Okay, Any other words you want to throw at me? Any other big words okay, to no, attack I, me? I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying that, you know, you're a pretty outrageous figure. I mean, you wouldn't consider yourself at all a little bit outrageous? No, Dillweed. I don't. I suppose there's no way to know for sure. All we have to go by is our guts and the footage. The literally thousands and thousands of hours of footage taken from between October 28th through November 2nd, 2009. Is it like this? Um, is this how I do it? Chicken always needs to be relaxed before you bone it. A relaxing light noise and specially designed aromatherapy will keep it moisturized. I will kill your mother! Then Now, huh? In the I mean, bathing suit area? I mean, vagina. Vagina, vagina, vagina. Where? It is pretty messy down there. Let's Let's tell you, it really, it's not good. Like, this is a cultural thing. The ants want boobs, so I'm bringing them boobs. You mean doggy style? My dark horse is horny. Yeah, it is made in China. But that's okay, because I'm made in China, too. Yeah! What can you brush your teeth with? Taste. Women can't drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suck it. Outrageous. A large, long-armed ape inhabiting Borneo and Sumatra. See, there's no way I'm outrageous. Uh, I've never been to Sumatra. Okay, well, <laughs> I actually think uh, you read the wrong definition. That is the definition of orangutan. Orangutan. Outrageous. Different. Very different. Coming up, we celebrate Olivia's career successes. And then there's my next project. Let's keep going. And later on, Olivia's tearful confession. I didn't know what to do. I thought my leg was full of smarties. Outrageous or angelic? <gasps> Daring or controversial? I've been dating this podium for over a month now. What? what the hell? Delectable or just plain dangerous? Whatever the public perception of Olivia Munn, one thing is for certain. She's light years from her humble beginnings as an Oklahoma Air Force brat. Now, you've done a thousand episodes on your show. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I'm really proud of it. And honestly, I could not have done it without the support of my crew. I mean, the Japanese are real professionals. The Japanese? Oh, you weren't talking about Uncle Fighters, my Japanese game show. No, I was talking about your live daily chat program, Attack of the Show. Oh, right. <laughs> Yay, me. But it seems the world has decided that a daily dose of Olivia Munn is simply not enough. Her face and her mouth-watering body have been burning up covers of magazines and publications by the droves including such titles as The Hundreds, University Link, Beyond Race Magazine, My Mag, Baby Tosser, Boot Knife Weekly, and of course, Dog Thief Magazine. And then in July of 2009, Olivia was slated for the big one. Tell me, what was it like to be chosen to be on the cover of Playboy Magazine? Oh, that was such an honor. You know, there are so many beautiful women in the world, and the fact that they picked me to be on their cover, a uh, really big thrill. <laughs> You're telling me. I got a thrill. I bought 40 copies. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 40. And why wouldn't I? I would have only bought one. 
But based on the unveiling on a pack of the show, I assume like probably thousands of other men, the magazine was going to be eight feet tall. Imagine my disappointment and my pleasure. But the life of a Playboy model isn't all swimming pools and luscious, dripping wet skin. There's also a serious responsibility to her fans, numbering in the millions. This is an onus that Olivia has met head on. It aroused the urge in me to reach out to you on a more personal level. <laughs> Agreeing to sign any and all Playboy magazines that were sent to her. I'm never going to get through this. A daunting task to be sure, but when it comes to her fans, Olivia's always got something to say. Wait, I just peed. <laughs> yes, Olivia Munn has peed straight into the hearts and minds of America, and she's not done yet. So you're on the January cover, cover of Maxim magazine. That's fantastic. Thanks, I'm really excited. Now Maxim actually has a very large male readership, so I assume you'll be signing all the covers of those magazines as well. Am I right? Right? Yes. Ah, there you go. You heard it here first. Olivia Munn will be signing every copy of Maxim magazine. Yes. What a champ. So eager to please her adoring fans. Hey everybody, welcome to my first Maxim cover shoot ever. Hey! We're going to fight in January. And as the magazine spreads mountain number, one can only wonder, how can anyone, especially Olivia, keep track of it all? You've done so many great things. Playboy alone. Well, I'm proud of my accomplishments, but I try not to dwell on my past. I like to look forward to into the future. Hmm, really? Well, yeah. Yeah, I like to do something amazing and then just forget all about it. Really? Yeah. Well, why do you ask me? Never mind. But Olivia Munn is no mere magazine cover girl. Behind the winning smile and fantastic creamy bod is an innate curiosity and a tenacity that has led her to become one of the most respected interviewers in the world of entertainment. Hard-hitting journalist. Yet another layer of the sweet white onion. That is Olivia Munn. How do you do it? It's really easy. What? Being an interviewer? Yeah, I mean, any dumbass can ask questions. <laughs> Actually, it, it's not that simple. Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's very hard. Trust me. How would you know? Because I'm an interviewer. I am interviewing you. This is what we are doing right now. Okay, that's what you call it. <laughs> Seriously? Well, one thing's for certain, Olivia really cuts through the muck engaging the world's A-list celebrities, from Elijah Wood to Michael Clark Duncan and even Dr. Drew. And she's not afraid to ask the really tough questions. Is it possible to get an STD in the anus? How dark is it? And he's doing, just dropping LCD all the time? LCD? Or L LCD. I heard that gray is also because you like women and men. It's Size right. matters. What do you think? You're a guy. She's like, hey Dave, what do you think about chapter three? when the, it went all over her face. <laughs> Does she talk like this all the time? Did you yeah. guys know? What's a dirty Sanchez? I don't know that. Do you know what dogging is? No. Porn? Is that Please. a weird question? It's not. I don't know what that means, but I like it. You're go home, gang. Go gang. home, gang. Go home, gang. Go home, gang. You look way better than Megan Fox. Way better. It's okay. She's still really pretty with her clothes on. Make sure to push him up real nice. He actually offered up to you, knowing that you're going to be on the show, a complimentary cup check. We're slamming, slamming, right here. Do you know Crocodile Dundee personally? I don't. If there's a really small penis, I look at it and think, does it work? Does it work? Regarding Olivia Munn's quest for the truth, this hardworking interviewer thinks it does. Which begs the question, where does it end? So, where does it end? It doesn't. You know, I really can't afford to rest on my laurels as a performer or as a person. You know, in fact, the one thing that keeps me going is my work with my charity. Oh, you have a charity? Yeah. It's called the Every Brown Bear Gets a Sandwich Fund. Together, me and my dedicated crew, we go out into the wilderness and find some... Wait, I'm, I'm going to stop you here. The charity is called Every Brown Bear Gets a Sandwich Fund. I'm Gassif. We bring sandwiches to all bears that are brown. What, like grizzly bears? Well, are they brown? 
Yes. Well, then they get a sandwich. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Okay, it's very it. simple. We hand feed sandwiches to hungry wild bears. Yeah, yes, but that seems extremely dangerous and highly irresponsible. Well, then you're part of the problem. Oh, okay, fine. So, TV, magazines, mm. celebrity interviews. It cannot be denied. Olivia, your star is truly on the rise. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, it's a, it's a turn of phrase. It basically meaning that your popularity is growing amongst the public. Because my star is already up there. I have been in the Twilight, Lost, Star Trek, and about a hundred other shows, okay? I am practically a pop culture icon right now. Well, I'm, I'm ch checking my notes here, and I, actually none of that, none of that. Okay, well, look who walked in thinking he was Woodward Bernstein, huh? It's a good thing I brought my own reel. Actually, this is the one I'm submitting to all the awards committee, so fingers crossed. <laughs> roll it. Okay, no, I, I am the one who says roll it. Roll it. Chestnuts on an open fire. If I can find them, Fatty! Oh, Gadget, I'm so excited for classes to start. You kill vampires, you don't date them. And possessor of a giant wing. Yeah. Now you will know what it's like to be terminated by a machine. We love each other. So just deal with it, Kevin. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I get it. You, you think those productions are real? They are. <laughs> okay. No, they are real. Coming up next, we get up close and personal with the real Olivia Munn, plus later on, Olivia's tearful confession. And then they listen, what is the thing? And I know. I had no idea what you just said. Actress, model, journalist, hostess, comedian, and philanthropist. These titles are only puzzle pieces and don't give us the complete picture of Miss Munn. Uh, I want to go home. There's another quieter side to this megastar. Can you just not follow me right now? The simple country girl next door behind the curtain. Just to avoid speculation, what exactly is your relationship with Kevin Pereira? Kevin. Well, he's like my rock, but also my hard place, if you know what I mean. No. He's like my king of hearts, but also my four of clubs, if you know what I mean. No, I don't actually. I, now I'm even more confused. Okay, let me make it simple. Yeah. Have you ever killed a raccoon with your car? No. Have you ever melted down pennies to make a figurine? Oh, yes. Then you get it. No. Okay, it's like this. You know when you're walking down the street, and then you just see an old juice box, like, sitting on the street, and you just think to yourself, should I or shouldn't I drink the juice? I still have no idea what she was talking about. And believe me, I thought about it for hours. And all I could come up with was this. Perhaps certain relationships aren't meant to be defined, only savored for their beauty and complexity. Five, six, seven, eight! Bad touch! Bad touch! Bad touch! Now let your lady part settle. Oh, oh yeah, I felt it. Okay, yeah. I felt that one. Well, my name is Kevin, and here's my tale. If you play it by the rules, you won't end up in jail. Yes, bigger! Oh, what is that? How is that going to get attention? There we go. One good dollar. Are you trying to kill me with a wrapped up shotgun again? Maybe. Open your mouth! It wasn't my arm. Oh. 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 Smell like crap. Thank you so much. Oh, no.
I hate you so much. I truly do. And you suck too. Your perform your performance is the pinnacle of masculinity in television drama. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, seriously it is. Keep keep reading. You want attention getting <laughs> Got someone's attention. <laughs> Sorry that I asked, or if I'm like, you know, half masked right now. I really? really don't know. Kevin's boner will live on inside of all of us. Love you so much. At least for now, it would seem Olivia's relationship with Kevin Pereira is purely platonic. This, however, has not been the case with everyone Olivia has worked with on the show. Tell me about Alan Thicke. Alan. What I saw on Attack of the Show was pure passion. Yes. But was it real? It was very real. Really? And it was just this pure, smoldering desire intense and uncontrollable we were actually we weren't even kissing we were just two animals unleashed and it was just ravenous that's what i'm talking about mm -hmm. just thinking about it i'm trembling wow trembling wow when i think about it everything else just falls away you know bills and life and the kids just but you don't you don't have children right they just faded away you know Mm -hmm. He destroyed six of my shirts with his teeth. <laughs> huh. okay. Oh, actually, there's this one time where he found this old pumpkin on my porch. And so he takes it and he just shoves it. It's like the whole thing. I'm like, he's like, no, you, you take your. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> OK, it feels so good so i'm sticking it in and it's like that for obvious reasons i'm unable to express anything olivia said to me in any detail whatsoever suffice it to say only a person in top physical condition could even remotely be capable of performing the bewildering acts that she described what's your secret how do you stay in such great shape no secret diet and exercise i speed walk around the mall and i also own a wee fit that's all you do yeah and I also eat eight to ten live baby ducks every day. You know this is going to be televised, right? Oh, I'd hope so. Okay, I'm just going to take this back for myself. Uh, okay, so, uh, Olivia, what do you do? Exercise, speed walking, oh, that's great, okay, great. Olivia, what do you eat? Eight to ten live baby ducks every day. Okay, fine, fine. Why, why would you do that? To absorb their vitality. <laughs> How else do you think I trained for Ninja Warrior? <laughs> but in fact, it would take more than helpless animals for Olivia to be able to conquer the grueling Ninja Warrior course. The determined Mun trained for two months to be able to tackle the difficult obstacles, taking advice from the many masters of the sport. How do you feel? Stupid. For Olivia, it was to be the challenge of a lifetime. I've never been more prepared in my life. I was at my peak. I knew the course, and I was channeling the souls of literally thousands of baby ducks. The stars were aligned. And so it was on March 15, 2009, Olivia faced destiny head on in order to become the next Ninja Warrior. <laughs> So what happened? Oh, well, the damn course was rigged, obviously. I mean, the, the rope was greased or something. And, it, and if you, you watch it, you can see that the audience, they're actually throwing rocks and tomatoes at me. Who does that? You see that? Did you see it? No, I didn't. But you will always be a ninja warrior in our hearts. Looking back over your life and career, what's your proudest moment? Well, that's easy. It's the day that I started my charity. Every brown bear gets a sandwich fund. 
Okay, I'm just gonna jump in here. That is actually not a charity, so. Wait, how can you say that? It's important work. I mean, these bears are wild and starving for some real food and sick of rubs and honey. And it's great for the children. Oh, they're, they're children of, I didn't know that, I'm sorry. Well, of course. They're the ones feeding the bears. Okay, I, I don't understand. What? We give sandwiches to children to give to bears. Okay, that is just horrifying. I think you meant miracle, Dezen. Uh, no, no, I did not. Coming up, the dark times. Plus, the moment Olivia didn't want you to see. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, a neighbor told me that every time you eat a butterfly, an angel gives you 50 bucks. A successful career in Bloom. I'm not doing it for less than seven. Hit seven figures and I'll do it. A busy personal life. I actually got a call back for this Taco Bell commercial, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it or not. And a charity whose nature is doubtful at best. It seemed as if Olivia Munn had nowhere to rise but up. But then, in 2009, the unthinkable not only got thought, but was spoken out of somebody's mouth. And as it turns out, this wasn't just any mouth. No, she is a true hooker. Um, how did it affect you when TV icon William Shatner referred to you as an expensive whore? It's devastating. Especially brutal because he was my childhood hero. I can imagine. And I lost so much sleep. I couldn't focus. And... I saw his face everywhere, and it just made me so mad. I actually wrote a poem about it. Do you mind? Oh, please do. It's called Pecked by the Shatbird by Olivia Munn. Malicious feathers, razor beak. With hunter's heart and hateful shriek, you fouled my fountain with your speak. William Shatner is a dick. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Poetry may heal all wounds, but at the time, the incident sent Olivia into a downward spiral. On set, this translated into outbursts. Stop that! You guys, we have to go to commercial. I'm not kidding. Full-blown tantrums. Can you get out of my face? What? Who has the microphone on? Sorry. Who has the ISP? Not you, not you, not you. Not you and this. That. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Ah! Where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? And outside the studio, Olivia was slowly losing control. This just into the E! Newsroom. E! News has obtained this exclusive video of G4 host Olivia Munn trying to purchase $500 worth of pie with signed copies of the Playboy magazine with her on the cover. I don't understand. Pablo Picasso used to do it. He signed napkins. You're not I Pablo didn't... Picasso. I am too, Pablo Picasso, okay? I'm the, ma I'm the Pablo Picasso of Ben's magazines, you Seriously, you know what? Anybody wants one of these? Okay, I'll be outside. Do you bring your own magic marker? Because I don't want to bring Sharpies everywhere. I can't do that. So, um, anyways, stop looking at me. Did you want one, sweetheart? Wait, did you have five dollars? Oh. Get out of Get out of my face! Stop. Then, around midnight on June 12th, 911 received this distress call. 911, state your emergency. Please help me. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. Please. Ma'am, calm down and tell me what's wrong. Oh my God, there's someone. Ma'am, is there someone in your house? No, no, there's someone on Twitter pretending to be me. Uh, excuse me? They're using my photo and making it look like I'm tweeting tweets about things I would never tweet, never, never. Ma'am? I tried retweeting their Twitter tweets to let all my tweets will know I was in a tweet tweeting those tweets, but then Twitter went down because there were too many tweets as if they were even went from bad to really bad. I almost killed a Pikachu. You're welcome. Buzz, buzz. As Olivia's life headed further off track, her fetish for costumes, once considered an eccentricity, went fully unrestrained. Ernest, make sure that everything's pulled down so I don't get a massive camel toe. I just had to wear costumes. I mean, 
every day. There was this one time I did a music video with Perry Grip, and I chose to wear 11 different costumes in less than three minutes. Obscured behind a cloud of foam, crinoline, and velvet, it was as if the Olivia Munn the whole world fell in love with was disappearing. It says a droopy vagina. Describe what was happening to you. I really don't even know. I mean, I would just look in the mirror, and I would just think, there's something missing. And the next thing you know, I had a wig and rubber tubing, and then I was dressed as Yoko Ono, and I was just out in the world. And as time bore on, the references got more and more obscure. One day, I dressed as a Lolly Dama, the Dalai Lama's baby mama. Mm -hmm. And then I came as Hulk Hogan's hair. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I started hybridizing. What does that mean? I dressed as Peter Pinocchio, mm -hmm. the little boy who wouldn't grow up to be a real boy. Wow, that is so convoluted. I don't even know where to begin. When did you realize that you actually had a problem? When I dressed up as Chewbacca. The Jewish Chewbacca. Why did you let this take over your life? I always told myself it was for the fans, but I don't know. I don't know. Were you Olivia Munn hiding? Maybe. Maybe you were overwhelmed by the spotlight. No, I don't really so. No, you were in the public eye for far too long, wearing many different faces, but yet the only face you wouldn't show is your own. Isn't that true? <sighs> there you go. Let it out. <gasps> yes, there you go. You have been holding this in for such a long time. Wait, wait, what is that? What is, what is that? Nothing. Show me your hands. Nothing. Show, nothing. Give me your hands. Give me. Okay. Give, no, the other one. The other, give me the other. Yeah, no, show me both hands. Both hands. Show. Give. What is this? Eye drops? No, it's Diet Sprite. It's hard to cry on cue. It clearly was a question that you wanted me to cry. Yeah, but I could get you there. Although this might have been just another dark patch in Olivia's otherwise bright career, the worst was yet to come. In her despair, Olivia turned to her greatest source of comfort, pie. Kelly, do you eat pie? What is pie? I got pie all over me. Do, do, me. And what was once a love affair with the delicious treat soon became an addiction. It is my greatest love. It was an all-out pie-murdering rampage that culminated in the blackest moment of Olivia's career and one few will ever forget. I want to cover myself in it. I couldn't take it anymore. I just jumped. <laughs> What was going through your mind at that moment? Oh my God. Yummy, yummy, yum yum, and then a yummo. I didn't think I'd ever recover. I just felt so lost and alone. How did you find your way back? Well, it's like that old saying goes, once you jump into a giant pie, Eventually, you have to get out and hose yourself off. I, actually, that's not it. You know what? Never mind. And Olivia, once again, would prove her resilience simply by soldiering on. When we come back, what lies ahead? And when I finally found a way to communicate with the manatee, I taught it some of my favorite R. Kelly songs. For Olivia, it's been an incredibly topsy-turvy journey with exhilarating highs and humbling lows. And we've been there every step of the way to share in the joy and the pain and leaving us to wonder what does the future have in store for Olivia Munn? So, tell me, what's next for Olivia Munn? Well, Desen, you know, I gotta 
keep going. Mm -hmm. Got upcoming photo shoots and finishing out my fourth year at AOTS. And of course, there's my charity work. Okay, it's not a charity. Yes, it is. No, it's not. It's a death trap for children. Whatever. And then there's my next project. Oh, what's that? It's a feature film. Exciting. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's not greenlit yet. Okay. But I'm so excited. I teamed up with my good friend, Eva Murray. She's Susan Sarandon's daughter. And we made a trailer. Yeah, not the movie, just the trailer okay. for what we would want the movie to be. Sure. Eva takes the mantle from her mother in the long-awaited sequel to a movie that means so much to all of us. And wow. if it's okay with you, I would love to show you and our fans right now. Well, my pleasure. Without much further ado, here is the world premiere trailer of Olivia Munn's next movie. Trailer. Keep going. What do you mean? You, Thelma Louise, we'd like to talk to you about a fresh start on a new world. Thelma and Louise, welcome to Pandora. You get me what I need, I'll see to it you get your legs back. Your real legs. Um, hey, what other legs would there be? I mean, are there options? Yeah, like if I wanted her legs, could I do that? Yeah, can I have your legs, like a manly legs? I bet you run fast. Or is there a book we can look through? Like a leg book? Oh, a leg book. These are your avatars. They're bodies that are remote controlled by your brains. Just relax and let your minds go blank. You look like a gay thundercat. Well, you look like a slutty super grover. Someone needs to go back to Fern Gully. Skank. Okay, Mystique, why don't you shapeshift into something that's not a bitch? I want you to learn from the inside. I want you to gain their trust. <laughs> you haven't gotten lost in the woods, have you? Forget what team you're playing for? What? No, no, it's not like that. We're just friends. So. Yeah. Okay. Plus, Avatar Louise has really bony ankles. Excuse me? They're really gross. Don't tell her. The strong prey on the weak, and nobody does a thing. They have sent us a message that they can take whatever they want. I'm gonna kill all y'all, blue skin cat monkeys! But we will send them a message that they can all eat a big, hot, gourmet plate of s***. Woo! Oh, yeah! Blue... Blue s***. I'm gunning for you, Phil and Louise. You hear me? Keep going. What do you mean? Go. You look like a wear smurf. You look like Braveheart with boobs. <laughs> Good is a word with multiple definitions, and you know, just trying to think of how I can apply that one to that. Yeah. It's easy. Just say it's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I be hard because, well, I mean, that was something oh. that you see yes. with your eyes. Uh -huh. Movies is an art form. Yes. So I saw something. Yes. With my eyes. Uh-huh. 
And that is good that I was able to see. Thank you. Yeah, I can't wait for it to hit theaters. <laughs> oh, I can. Now, why don't we just forget about that and, and look ahead. Olivia, you've led such an interesting life. Any words of advice for people out there who want to be something and are nothing? Well, something I've learned is that glass cleaner isn't made from melted blue popsicles. Wow. And follow your dreams. Okay, I should have stopped at the first one. The first one felt powerful and second one. Follow your dreams. Okay, yeah, we heard that part. Okay. Unless you're unattractive. I know. It probably won't happen. No, it's just getting out. Don't say that. Words to live by. From a woman who has enchanted us since childhood, wowed us with her beauty, tickled us with her wit, dodged serious allegations, and most importantly, entertained us, and always will. I, for one, feel truly lucky and blessed to have gotten to know the real Olivia Munn. Olivia, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me into your lovely house. Oh, thanks for being here. Hey! Run! I'm sorry, what? Run! If there's one thing I had to grab in a fire, it'd be that. <laughs> About 40 copies. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you. Hey, Lily, what do you eat? Eight to ten live baby decks. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Eight to ten live baby ducks every day. I think a little peeking out of that. <laughs>